Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Convert Array to Object 3, part of the Diagnostic Skills Check at the end of Module 1. So we're going to write a function called Transform Employee Data. Um, we have an input that is an array. Inside of that array are two inner arrays, and inside of those two inner arrays are a series of uh, arrays of length 2, each of which is going to be a key and a value within an object. Now, you might recognize that the problem that we just did is essentially taking this and changing it to this. So now all we need to do is we need to kind of stuff that into its own iteration, which is to say we're going to iterate over this input array, and then within that we're going to iterate over each one of these inner arrays, and as we're doing that, we'll create an object for each one of these, and then push, or not push, sorry, uh, set a property on that object with each one of these representing a key and a value. So, let's go ahead and get to it. The first thing that we're going to need is a result array. So we'll say result is equal to an array. Now the problem with this though is that we're gonna to need to create a couple other things. We're gonna to need to create two inner objects here. So let's say um, hmm, container. We'll say container is equal to an empty array and at the very end we're gonna return a container. Now the reason that we're going to call it container and not result is because we're going to call each one of these individual objects result. Um, actually, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to call it person object or something, something a little bit more descriptive like that. Now that we're headed towards module two, we are going to need to start paying attention to things like that. Um, so everything can't be called result, unfortunately. Anyway, variable i is equal to zero. i is less than employee data dot length i is going to be incremented each time. And I wonder if we can just say console.log employee data and see what we get. Because it'd be nice to know what this level of iteration looks like. Let's run our tests. And not much in terms of a console output. Well, that's okay. Let's go over to Replit. It's going to be very helpful for us to, to look at this. And you guys know, I gotta change it to dark. Interestingly enough, I read something about this the other day. It has something to do with the way that your eye focuses on depth of field in a dark background versus a light background. So if you've been watching these and you see that I clicked to a dark uh, background, I used to not have a reason, I now have a fledgling reason. So I'm gonna grab my function, put it over here. But I'm gonna accidentally hit copy again, so I'm not going to have it, so I'll go back, hit copy, there we go. And now let's put some input stuff. We'll say variable input is equal to this. Then we're going to call the function. We'll say variable output is equal to our function. And we'll call it on input. And output is spelled with a T. So if we run this and we're console.logging the employee data at i here, I just want to see what I have at this level of the iteration, just to make sure that I, I keep things straight. Okay, so that's a delightfully awkward output. But essentially what we have here is an array of arrays that goes from here to there, and then another array of arrays that goes from here to there. So what we essentially have is we have an array for each person. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say variable person array is equal to employee data at i. Now all this is going to do is just give us an easier way to refer to employee data at i and it'll make sense in a moment while we're up to that. So we have a person array. We need to iterate over the person array and create an object out of it. So if we need one, we're going to want to create a person object here. Create it equal to an empty object. Then we're going to iterate over the person array. So we'll say for variable j is equal to zero. j is less than person array, which again is just employee data at i. We've just said something that's going to point to the exact same thing that employee data at i does, but it's a little easier to read than employee data at i. Person array gives us a good impression that it's like, okay, this is one of those arrays that contains inner arrays that describe the person. So person array uh, dot length i plus plus, except it's not i is it anymore, it's j. And let's console.log person array at i. A j, rather. So once we've done that, we're going to clear the console over here, and then we'll hit run. Okay, cool. So there, those are our little uh, 
I don't want to call them tuples because it's not actually a thing in JavaScript, but essentially these are our of length two arrays, which I guess is way easier to say than tuple for some reason. Anyway, so the person array at j represents a key value pair that we eventually want to put into our person object. So if that's the case, we'll say variable key is equal to uh, person array at j at zero because that's going to be this one, at least for the first iteration. And then variable value is equal to person array at j at one. Now you might be thinking, hey, uh, don't we need to do something about creating different keys and values for each time? Uh, we do, but that's what this for loop is up to. These variables are going to be created inside of this for loop, and then the next time it's going to create them and reassign them essentially to the next um, element in the person array. So now that we have a key and a value, we want to set a property on our person object with a key of our key variable and a value of our value, value variable, value variable. Anyway, after we've done all of this, what's going to happen at that point is that our person object is full and it looks like, where is it? It looks like one of these guys. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to add it to our container after this for loop completes. So this for loop here is iterating over the person array. That person array contains all of those tuples, and we'll just go with tuple. Once it gets to the end of that, we know that we've built our person object up to what it needs to be inside of the container. So we'll push it to the container at this point. The next time this all starts over, person object will be reassigned to a new empty object but it'll create a new one too. So it's not going to affect this person object that we're pushing. And same thing for person array. It's going to be employee data at i. So instead of at i being zero, it's gonna be i is one. So now we've got that, push container. Let's follow through on this one because this is how you would do it if you were messing around in Replit. We're gonna console the log the output after we've assigned the output to be whatever transform employee data returns when we pass in this input. So after all of that, let's go ahead and clear and run. And we left a console.log in there somewhere. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's run. I don't know why it's outputting it so awkwardly, but this is correct because this is the first object and then this is the second object. They've been built correctly. So now that we have something that's approximating a correct answer, we're gonna copy it, go back to um, the learn platform, paste that whole thing in here Take one more quick glance at it just to make sure things look appropriate. Making an array, iterating over the outer array, identifying a person array to be an element of the outer array, creating a person object, which we're gonna convert this person array to, iterate over the person array, grab the key and the value, which is the current element in the person array at zero and one respectively, set that as a property on the person object, and then once that for loop completes, push that newly built person object into the container. Then it iterates over again. We do it for any more things inside of employee data. And then we return the container. If we run our tests, we're in great shape. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next video.